now we need to simplify the concept of shock waves as required in our study now under waves okay now when we're dealing with shock waves we need to build this idea from how waves uh, behave when you're dealing with sources either in motion or stationary so when we talk about uh, wave fronts produced by a point isotropic source uh, we normally have these waves giving a pattern which is taking a spherical shape okay from what we see in this diagram here the source here is stationary therefore the wavelength throughout all around the source is actually equal and they spread out with the speed c which is the speed of the wave uh, the wavelengths are equal all around as i have said uh, the stationary salts so that is one very important concept as we are building up the idea of shock waves now thinking of the source and the speed of waves now the motion of the source has effects on the wavefront propagation okay for instance if you think of a case where a source is moving at a velocity less than that of the wave C, the wave fronts in front of the moving source have shorter wavelengths relative to those behind the source. Look at the diagram. If you think of the distance between this point and this point, comparing to what we have this at the end, you can attest to the fact which we have just mentioned earlier there talking about the idea of the change in the wavelength based on the motion of this source here at a velocity Vs. So in other words, we are saying Vs is less than C in this case. And this is what is found out. Now moving on, the other scenario is when the velocity of the source is equal to that of the wave. Okay? So when we have Vs equal to C, and uh, we realize this kind of pattern here where we have this length greater but no much uh, separation we find in the wavelength as we consider the frontal part of the source the, 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 the source as it moves okay this is something to note now i want us to progress and see what happens when we now have vs greater than c remember we have talked about a case when Vs is equal to C in the case when Vs is less than C. So when we are dealing with cases of Vs greater than C, then what happens? Now, if you consider that case uh, where the velocity of the source is higher than the wave velocity, the wave fronts intersect. At some points you can see if this is the this is where the position of the source at this point. This is actually the the the, the wave where it has reached and then when you get to a point here you get this other pattern and they end up intersecting and you see this kind of shape that is achieved by that okay thinking about that the tangential surface of the wave front uh, called the surface of much context a conical shape that is clear here you see this kind of shape yeah now, the surface is referred to as conical wave front of shock waves so already we are getting into the understanding of what shock waves are a body within the conical region will interact with the waves from multiple sources remember at every station we had the source giving out waves and therefore we treat those points as multiple sources okay so we are saying that uh, uh, the wave from multiple sources in the same phase leading to high oscillation of each point of the medium particles here of the same body and as a result of superimposition this body can either break down or shatter so there's some kind of shock that uh, that the body experiences as a result of these multiple sources of waves we are closer to the definition of what we mean by these shock waves. So basically trying to treat this, we have to also bring in some aspect of geometry 
to try to understand what we mean by the shock waves. And this diagram is going to be equally very important even as we try to understand this. So you see, uh, this is just but the other image we had in the other slide uh, uh, facing this direction. We want to now get more details of it. So you see this surface here, this tendential uh, surface uh, of the, of the match cone. And then this is actually what traces the path of the sources. So if you have at this point the source giving a wave, then after some time giving another, some other time emitting another, and so on and so forth as it moves. So in other words, the time from here to here could be uh, equal to the time from here to here if the velocities are the same. But if we have different velocities, then we may have difference in, in some of these aspects we have talked about. So trying to bring in geometry into this, we want to find out this angle formed between the path of the source and the tangential uh, surface, okay, or this line which is touching the surface of the waves as, as, as the body moves. So that angle is what we are talking about here, okay. So if you look at this analysis or this kind of uh, uh, geometry, let's think of a case, you know, from simple geometry we know that if you have a radius of a, some, uh, of a circle uh, touching a tangent at some point, then it forms 90 degrees at that, area, that point. So if you have here as 90, then that simply means that this is hypotenuse and this is actually opposite to the angle we are interested in. So if you are comparing opposite uh, with some hypotenuse thing, then we are talking about a sine relationship. So sine of that theta is supposed to give us opposite, which is Vt, or what you can call Ct, because that V is talking about the speed of the wave, over divided by Vs times T, which is basically the speed of the source, velocity of the source, uh, times time. Why, why, why Ct or why Vst? You know, distance is found by velocity times time, okay? So we want to talk about this distance compared by, compared to this distance to find that angle. And therefore, we're trying to simplify because we have T here, T here, we end up with V over Vs, or what you can call C over Vs. Uh, yeah? I want to use V and C interchangeably. Uh, that, that is a simple thing to understand, of I. Uh, so we have V over Vs, then because we, because we are finding this angle, we are talking about sine inverse of that. Okay, or what you call axine of this. So uh, I want to also compare with an idea or a concept called uh, Mach number. Mach number. So when you talk about Mach number, this is basically multiples of speed of sound in a given environment of a body in motion. Okay. So basically, Mach number is obtained by finding the object velocity divided by the velocity of sound in that environment. So, relating to the shockwaves in question, we realize that that angle we found previously using this formula can still be found by using Mach number. So, 1 over Mach number is simply trying to reverse what we have here, yeah, so that we have V or Vs. S was the source. Source can be carried by an object moving. So, that simply means we have reversed this. So, we end up with theta equal to sine inverse of 1 over Mach number. So, Remember that, even as we want to try an example. An airplane is flying at 725 meters per second at an altitude where the speed of sound is 290 meters per second. What angle does the shock waves produced make with the direction of the airplane motion? So now that we have velocity of the body and we also have the velocity of sound in that environment, we can easily get Mach number. Mach number, velocity of the plane over velocity of sound, this is just giving us 2.5. Now for us to find the angle which is asked in this question, the sine inverse of 1 over Mach number, that is basically giving us an approximate angle of 23.6 degrees. I want you to try this question, and of course I'm giving the answer, so the distance from the question to the answer is supposed to be covered by good students like you. Now an airplane is flying at a height 6,400 meters at Mach 1.7. How long after it is directly overhead will a person hear a sonic boom? Take the speed of sound to be 300 meters per second. So you'll end up with something looking like a triangle 
where the head of a person is down here and uh, the plane motion and the investigation up there so this height is 6400 meters then the mark number here is supposed to help you know the angle between that path of the plane and where uh, this uh, uh, this person is so that angle is up there okay i'm just trying to to bring an imaginary thing which is not very vis visible so that's a clue that's a hint to what you'll find out so when you get to to, to draw such kind of figure you are able to come up with distances and uh, t because remember we are talking about vt giving us a distance and then you end up with d as 17.3 seconds try it it is good to try and it will make life sweeter and enjoyable thank you and remember to subscribe